Hello, my name is John Palfrey. Welcome to the first of our training webinar series in relation to our range of systems at Thermal Energy Solutions. We design, manufacture and install residential, commercial and industrial water heating systems. And today our webinar begins with a component referred to as the ROSC20. It works in conjunction with our um, Enemax Smart Cube tank and our stainless steel coil set submerged in that tank, working as a thermal battery, which is holding unpressurized water. You can see here a vertical heating element connected to our control module, in turn that takes a DC power supply from solar PV collectors. Recently, we've been exhibiting extensively throughout regional Australia and have enormous interest in off-grid energy supply and off-grid technology and how it relates to our plant and equipment. So today's session is going to be on how the ROSC20 works relative to solar PV and heating water, some of the advantages and benefits of the system, particularly relating to function, installation and operation. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, from now, I'd like to, uh, during this webinar, introduce other um, people at the Thermal Energy Solutions team. Um, our engineers, Javier and Peter, and also our plumbing manager, Brett. Um, to start off with you, Javier, can you go back to the beginning, please, mate, and just explain to everybody how it works relatively to a solar PV panel uh, creating hot water? Thanks, John. So it's very simple. It's just an off-grid uh, product, um, basically dedicated PV panels connected up to 3.6 kilowatts directly to the SC20. Uh, we make it very easy for installers. It's just two NC4s. So it's inside the unit there is an MPPT tracker. So it's always, we make sure that the panels are working at the maximum power. And if there is no solar, you can also connect the, the AC boost, so. Okay, but when you say off-grid, so this is working uh, purely on, on solar yield, and the um, connection between the, the PV panel. How many would you need on the roof, Javier, if you're talking about two kilowatts typically? Um, between four and eight panels, uh, mm -hmm. that will be, yeah, fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, and as you said, it's completely off-grid. Uh, yep. So that's good if there is a blackout or something happens in the grid, mm -hmm. you will always get uh, energy. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, I'll pass over now to um, Peter Teo, our senior engineer, who's involved in um, our project design work um, from residential applications all the way through to the very largest uh, commercial industrial application. What are some of the jobs recently, Pete, where you've seen the industry and the market move towards this sort of technology? What are you seeing at the moment out there? Yeah, so warehouse is a very popular application. All right. So what we do is just like put a satellite hot water plants and near to the uh, point of use. So uh, traditionally, they would need to run along services to the point of use these tanks can be placed near the water outlet and then all you need to do is to run DC cable up to the roof with PV panels up to the roof. The PV panels will just energize the tank directly and then you generate solar hot water to the, to the warehouses. Uh, warehouses love it because it's like they get well, solar hot water and at the same time as well uh, is maintenance free. Mm -hmm. They don't need to worry about pipelines and things like that. All they need to do is uh, worry about is, uh, running the cables which is pretty easy to run. So again off grid, so correct me if I'm wrong Pete, this is hot water for free? Yeah. In a commercial right. application yeah. like a warehouse. Mm -hmm. I noticed also too you, you've done other uh, projects and applications recently um, outside of just directly, mm. you know, supplying hot water for, for fixtures. Mm. What are some of the, the other jobs that we've, we've done recently, Pete, that you've been involved with the design? Yeah, so one of the one that we involved in is uh, in pipe cup. And what we do is uh, we helping that building to achieve net zero. Mm -hmm. So we use a PV hot water to gen, uh, generate hot water and to meet all the hot water load in the building. And so that pretty much they get free hot water uh, for the whole facility, the training facility as well. The other one we have done is to help the uh, facility managers to offset their uh, ring main losses. So uh, uh, yeah, 30 yeah. stories sure. of, uh, office blocks yep. where traditionally you know, things are like these are losses that they just need to you know, uh, factor that in. Mm -hmm. Right now we have options for them to use the PV to offset uh, ring main losses and in 
for this particular office block that we have done, we managed to offset about 80% of the remain losses. Right. For facility managers, they love it because it's like we're helping them to reduce costs, which is their, uh, their, their aim as well, and helping their stakeholder as well mm -hmm. to achieve uh, their net zero goal yep. because uh, we actually reduce the amount of uh, uh, well, gas consumption, yep. uh, electricity consumption that needing for the building. Right, okay. Um, on to the plumbing side of, uh, I guess, the, the system, Brett, you, you've grown up with the uh, the plumbing industry moving through the, the solar technology space, um, solar PV, directly connected into a tank, off-grid, uh, you know, heat loss mitigation, etc. What are some of the things you're seeing in this field, more so, mate, relating to the installation, supply, maintenance, etc., from a plumbing aspect? Yeah, we eliminate a lot of the variables straight away, so pump sizing, flow and return pipe work, pipe sizing, uh, the possibility of freezing or steaming in the right weather conditions. Uh, that's all a goal in this instance because we're only running a, a single wire back to an element. So I think there's a lot of benefits there straight away, not only cost but maintenance and long-term long -term benefits. And in terms of maintenance, again, you've taken out the things that fail most, your pumps, your thermostats, uh, sensor wires. So all that stuff's now eliminated. So there's large benefits there for, for plumbing installers, even though it might not be common technology to them, it's going to be definitely a way of the future. What about the fact that we know a lot of traditional solar systems, there's that additional storage capacity, rule of thumb for each thermal collector, 100 litres of stored water, whereas what we're doing here, directly injecting into the body of water in the tank, yeah. the footprint reduction, are you seeing that you know, for retrofit and new applications as well? Yeah, well, most large applications these days are already have PV installed as well, so we're going to take a little bit of that PV now and generate the hot water as opposed to eating out of their foot, uh, PV footprint and putting in large thermal panels, which obviously weigh a lot more because of the water-based water, water -based technology. So there's, again, more benefits in that, that instance as well. And also with thermal, thermal panels, we're looking at uh, temperature differentials normally to turn pumps on and uh, gain solar yield. In this case, we're going to gain solar yield throughout most of the day. So there's, a lot, again, a lot of benefits with the PV over thermal. Then just following up with that as well, it they mean the, for the for the PV, mm -hmm. it works on uh, breathing sun. So anything that comes up from the heat the panel will generate uh, uh, hot water directly to the So we're not panel. losing water, dumping water through TPR yeah. valves and the like, Pete, are we? I exactly. guess that the, the yield contribution is maintained, held mm -hmm. in the thermal battery and then used, you know, downstream as a primary heating source to, to fixtures. Yeah, that's right. So the, uh, the other thing is just like uh, what we uh, touched on as well in terms of footprint, we do not need to preheat the solar anymore. Mm. So the, the, traditionally they've got preheat plants where mainly because of thermal solar can't generate high temperature, sometimes need to work on low temperature to get the yield. Yep. With PV, it does not matter mm. because we're not working on uh, differential temperature anymore. So any time that uh, when the panels get sunlight, you end up able to heat up the tank straight away, yep. uh, regardless of the tank temperature. Yeah, I understand. Now, this particular system type, the ROSC20, so a, a DC uh, connected uh, cable link between the PV panels and the tank, what other energy sources are you seeing peak being used in conjunction with this system type, residential and, and commercial? Yeah, so one of the uh, big things is that the uh, heat pump can go together well with, the, uh, the, uh, with this element. So heat pump is well, one of the options too because it's, uh, it's an electric system. Mm -hmm. So in a house where they want to go gas free, which is very common as well, it's a common trend at the moment where they want to go gas free, then heat pump is a very good boost and work really well with the SC20. Right. And most of people with SC20 will put PV panels in the system up the roof as well. Yep. So in, in the end, what they have is like got PV panels that concentrating mm -hmm. uh, on generating solar hot water. Yep. And you've got another inverter system to offset the heat pump running costs. Okay. So sure. for that, they potentially, I mean, during the daytime, the, the, the running cost of hot water will be very, very low. Mm -hmm. uh, in this instance, yeah. mm -hmm. Significant advantages in terms of the energy reduction, yeah. carbon footprint reductions, etc., mm -hmm. etc. One more thing though, um, guys, we're hearing a lot and, and discussing a lot in regards to the data. Mm. It seems to be the, the, the common trend these days, whether it's a facility manager, hospital manager, even just a, a residential um, owner of a dwelling, the, the data, Javier, how is that sort of captured? And what's the sort of 
information people can now you know gain from from this system type. That's a really good point. So it's another advantage of our product, the C20. So we can monitor many variables like uh, temperature, uh, power. Um, from the software, you can control the the temperature, the desired temperature. You can regulate. You can turn off on on the the boost. Control the time when the boost comes. Um, and you can also copy and paste to Excel and yeah. Um, we recently got the data from a, a case study, a residential case study, and I was very surprised with the results. Mm -hmm. um, this family of three people, just seven panels. Yep. Um, they're basically, you do the calculations through the year, the 92% of all the hot water right. from solar. Wow. How good is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So, Look, there it is, just a very brief overview uh, again of uh, the technology that's available here at Thermal Energy Solutions covering off today the uh, connection between solar PV and, and heating water. Thanks very much for your time. Keep in uh, contact with us. We will be doing this series of webinars ongoing based on our um, uh, web of energy where again the NMAX Smart Cube tank is the central point to our system with the variable energy sources that can be introduced into the tank and from that where we can deliver to various fixtures and applications throughout the residential and commercial market. Thanks very much for your time. We look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now. Sorry about the phone, but Norm wanted it raw, so maybe you can just let the phone keep ringing in the background.